Hello everybody and welcome to yet another Many Interpretations of video where today we are actually looking at our very first hadrosaur. You know, there's going to be a lot of firsts in this little series. Uh, but this is our first hadrosaur, second herbivore. Extremely exciting. You saw the title. It's Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus is such a cool dinosaur. You know, an incredibly unique dinosaur with that awesome looking crest. So it's one that I'm extremely excited to take a look at all the all of the different uh, media interpretations of. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit longer than I had initially assumed, which is fine. I mean, a lot of you seem to like longer videos anyway. But yeah, let's uh, let's get right into it. We will go ahead and start off with Fantasia. Uh, Fantasia has a very cool and I and like you know just definitely an aged design. But I just I love seeing those aged designs because I like to see our idea of dinosaurs at that certain point in time. Um, it's got the upright stance, you know, more of a kangaroo stance that was very common for a lot of bipedal dinosaurs at the time. Even though Parasaurolophus was quadrupedal, but you know that's. Uh, something that we learned later. I mean, it was it was quadrupedal, but could switch to a bipedal uh, locomotion if it was running. You know, that that's hadrosaurs. But one thing to note, and we might see this quite frequently, or you know, semi-frequently, is that it actually has like sort of like a skin membrane attached to its crest and going down to the base of its neck, even with like some skin on its back. Um, I, we don't really have fossil evidence for this or against this, so. I don't really know how valid something like that would be. I couldn't really find too much on it. Uh, but you know, of course, if you want to weigh in, be sure to let me know. But yeah, that's that's a cool little design flair that it has and definitely makes it stand out from the rest of the dinosaurs in that short. And then after that, we have the very iconic, uh, I, I know I say iconic a lot, but we have the very iconic Land Before Time. Now, this one was a little bit tricky because I believe the initial development of the first uh, Land Before Time, Ducky and her family, uh, they were meant to be uh, they were meant to be Parasaurolophus. But of course, they do share closer re resemblance to that of Saurolophus, which is similar to Parasaurolophus, but of course has a smaller crest. Um, but and at the same time, in like future films and things like that, we do see what are very very apparently meant to be Parasaurolophus with uh, various different like colors and things like that, different patterns. Um, so I think that later on it was meant, like the idea was that Ducky was a Saurolophus and the other paras, I'm going to call them paras, you know, for sake of brevity. Uh, but the other paras were, of course, the Parasaurolophus. But like I said, there's a few different design variations that they gave these guys. Um, there's some with kind of like a pink color. Of course, there was this scene right here that I remember very well. <laughs> Uh, it's one of those times when the Land Before Time series got decently dark. Um, yeah, no, it's a very cool design. I, I, I'm especially like this one because this one definitely reminds me of uh, how dinosaurs looked when I was a child. You know, it was just it's just so fun. I love Land Before Time. Don't you love Land Before the Time? I do. And then moving on from that one, we of course have the Jurassic franchise, which has a few different iterations of one Parasaurolophus. Now, the very first time we saw Parasaurolophus, or Para, sorry, geez, I need to get in the habit of that. I'm never going to. Uh, but the very first time we see Para is on the lake in the distance right next to the Brachiosaurs when you're, when you're first introduced to the Brachiosaurs. So we can't really make out their design too too well. I mean, they definitely have the basic shape of Parasaurolophus. They're a bit thin and they do seem to have like kind of a greener color. Um, and they're quadrupedal, you know, they're moving at a quadrupedal stance uh, for the majority of the time, which is correct. Um, so, you know, that's our first introduction to them, but we get a much more up close and personal look at the para in the Lost World Jurassic Park, where it's for one thing, it's massive. One thing I always loved to note when I was younger is how big it was, um, which is true. Parasaurolophus was a huge animal. Again, it's a little bit more thin, but I really like the noises that it makes because in actuality, Parasaurolophus is one of the few dinosaurs that we actually have a good idea to what it sounded like. See, that crest is actually hollow and it connects to the nasal cavity. So there's a lot of reason to believe that the Parasaurolophus would force air through its nasal cavity through that crest to create these loud kind of honking noises. So when you hear para, the Parasaurolophus making something like that in a movie or show, then it's pretty close, or at least likely pretty close. And then in Jurassic Park 3, we see the basically the same design for the para uh, with 
you know, more so a green color rather than being a little bit more brown, but the model's still basically the same. Um, you know, they show up in the herd, which is a very fun scene to see. You know, it's just a great way to show a lot of uh, hadrosaurs, especially the Corythosaurus, a dinosaur you don't see too frequently, so that's fun. Um, but then, after that, within the Jurassic franchise, well, actually, we'll talk about JPOG first. Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, of course, has Parasaurolophus, and because it's, you know, taking inspiration or modeling it off of the, the movies, it looks looks like the Lost World um, para, so you know, that, that, that checks out for the franchise. You love that consistency. But then in Dominion, we get an updated design for the para. And I got to say that this is by far my favorite design of the animal. Um, to me, it just looks the most like Parasaurolophus. It's a little bit more robust. It's a little bit thicker. It is smaller than they were in previous movies, which like I said, Para was a huge animal, so that's a little bit sad. Um, but I, the head shape, I think, looks fantastic. I love the forelimbs. I love how they're a little bit more fused together rather than being like individualized fingers. Um, I love the tail and the uh, how some of them have more so blue stripes. Uh, you know, blue, I think, is a really cool color to show up on, on these animals. All in all, the, the Dominion design, I think, is my favorite design of the animal. And, you know, the, in like, say, in Evolution, Jurassic World Evolution, the Dominion design is the one that I place most frequently. I just, I'm a huge fan of it. But then moving on, we finally re return to Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Of course, these are giant mechanical dinosaurs, so there's no place for accuracy there. But you can tell that this is meant to be para. The para, you know, it's got the crest. Um, it's more so an upright stance, but it has a thick tail. A tail that is more so, it's kind of like pliers. It's like a plier tail. Uh, it's a very cool inclusion. Um, I especially like this one because I actually had the toy. I also had the Ankyla toy. The para one I thought was always really fun to kind of like, because you were able to open and close its tail, of course. So it was just, it was just really fun. Not much that can be said. It's a giant robotic parasaurolophus. Like you, you seriously can't go wrong with there, with, with that. I can't talk either. And now, unfortunately, we have a movie that I have not seen, even though I have seen several trailers of it, but I have never gotten the opportunity to actually watch it. And that is We're Back, a dinosaur story. Um, you know, it's another animated show. It's incredibly stylized. Uh, so the para present here, it looks like his name is Dweeb. Uh, Dweeb the Parasaur uh, has a very, very unique design. You gotta love it. You know, it gives him a lot of character, uh, sets him apart from basically all of the other designs, that's for sure. Uh, it has a buck, you know, buck teeth. It has the skin, the skin membrane attaching to his crest. Huge eyes, eyebrows, things like that. You gotta love it. It's just, you know, I love animated versions of these animals, especially when they're stylized and you can still get the idea of what they're meant to be. Cause like, even though it's very different to the real uh, Parasaurolophus, I can still tell that he's meant to be the para. And that wins to me. Next up, we have the Magic School Bus. I didn't think that this one was gonna show up, but I'm glad it did. Um, it looks like they encounter a herd of paras. Um, I love their design here. The, it looks like they're able to switch from both bipedal and quadrupedal locomotion. Huge plus. Um, they have the skin membrane attached and they have a really cool color scheme, the kind of contrasting colors of like a yellow body with more of a red or dark orange uh, accents around it. You know, it, it looks really cool. Like it, it seriously looks really cool. Again, I can't, I can go on and on about all, all day about how I like cartoon versions of these animals. And this is just another great example of that. And then there's T-Rex back to the Cretaceous. Uh, the biggest thing I want to note about this para, para design is that I love the patterns and the coloration. It looks like they have like kind of a blue pattern uh, mixed in with some duller colors. It looks so cool. And you know, their models look fantastic too. Uh, this is like honestly just all things considered especially given its time. This is a really solid design Like I'm a huge fan of this one another project that I haven't seen I have th had this project Requested to me before but I haven't been able to find where I can watch it. Of course. I don't I haven't found it on any streaming service I haven't found it uh, To rent anywhere I have to find it and check it out because this looks like a very interesting little project that um, you know beforehand I have never heard about so Hopefully, stay tuned for something like that, you know, because I'm sure I'll talk about it if I ever watch it, but we'll see. We are back to Disney's dinosaur. Um, of course, in this movie, we kind of, we get the parasaur in semi of a big way, 
like kind of a big way and then the rest of the film in as like a background dinosaur of course the first big way is the baby parasaur that inevitably leads all of it leads the carna carnotaurus to the rest of the herd kind of or something like that it's, the carnotaurus was likely stalking them already but you know but anyway you gotta love the the scene where it's just like it's just a little baby and it's just running around it's having fun um you know it's just it's just really fun to see but one big thing i want to point out is the fact that they did differentiate the baby design from the adult design like it looks completely different um, a lot of times in nature a young version of an animal is completely different to the adult version like they have different proportions and, and things like that and that's something that is shown here with this like relatively bigger eyes and the smaller crest and things like that uh, that you know that's a nice attention to detail i always love seeing that uh but then the the massive parasaur the, the the older one also looks awesome i really like the green colors it has the the skin membrane another instance where this pops up it's able to switch from bipedal to quadrupedal locomotion all things considered it's a very solid design and certainly does remind me of the parasaur and we finally made it to one of my favorite shows ever, especially as a child. That's Prehistoric Park. Um, the Prehistoric Park, it's the during the Dinosuchus episode, also the final episode of the show. Um, they have, there's a herd of them and they're all honking. It sounds really great. I really like their colors. I, I like the blue crests and the duller bodies. I think they look fantastic. They're able to switch from bipedal to quadrupedal locomotion. Um, even the, even, you know, Nigel mentions that it's likely that they, forced air through their crest and that's how they produce their sounds very good you know something that holds up today you always love to see it um but yeah no they're they're one of my favorite iterations of paris or all of this simply because i really like the show and i'm incredibly nostalgic for the show um so yes 10 out of 10 even though they're a bit thin and we do get to witness a young one get uh become dinosuchus food Next up is Para from Dinosaur King. Um, of course, one of the main character dinosaurs, so we get a younger version of her who is 2D, whereas the older version is uh, 3D. Uh, the 2D one, you know, has all the same basic colors, but, you know, different proportions and looks extremely cute and you gotta love it. And then the adult one is, you know, thicker in general. I mean, it's a bit thin in the neck. Uh, Parasaurs likely had pretty thick necks, as well as the rest of the body being pretty thick. Um, but it does look really good, and I'm always a fan of the, the coloration that they decide to give these dinosaurs in Dinosaur King. And I just, you know, I, I really like the style of Dinosaur King. Like, I've never, I've never really had a design that I just looked at and I said, ugh, it's terrible. You know, I've never had that. Right after that, we have Bizarre Dinosaurs, the little National Geographic special. And much like the Carnotaurus, it's just an interesting design. I mean, you can you can kind of tell that there really wasn't much of a budget that went into the actual CGI effects because their designs are just not great it's very thin um the head shape is strange i mean it looks like it matches up with the skull decently well but the crest especially is just kind of odd i don't know it's just it's not really a design that i'll gravitate towards anytime soon but we're back to the realm of animation with dinosaur train uh, we also get a younger version who again has different proportions to the adult that's always a plus um with more, and this is this is the return of the kangaroo stance, upright stance, almost tra tail dragging. You know, it's pretty standard for a lot of uh, depictions. Uh, but the, the the grown one keeps the same colors, but has more elongated uh, proportions, uh, the, like the longer crest and the longer snout. And you know, the colors are definitely interesting. It certainly fits the style of dinosaur train, so that's always fun. Next up, we have another documentary that is The Clash of the Dinosaurs. Uh, this is one that I used to, to own. Um, the design looks pretty good. Like all, all things considered, I really like it. I really like how stiff and thick the tail seems. Uh, something else that was pretty much true for them. Uh, the crests look really cool. I like the contrasting colors of like the brighter crest with the duller bodies. I mean, you know, along with them being able to produce sounds through their, through their crest, it's likely that they would have used them as, you know, a display structure as well. You know, the, many animals with, with structures have different purposes of them. So I like seeing the brighter colors. So I, I think that certainly fits on on something like a Parasaurolophus crest. But I will note that, you know, in the in the show or in the in the documentary, they do portray Parasaurolophus with like a you know, a very loud honking noise that would stun attackers or something along those lines. No, probably not. You know, that's just, it was an interesting thing to come up with. But, you know, these dinosaurs don't really have superpowers. <laughs> but I'll also mention the last day of the dinosaurs. Of course, this is not Parasaurolophus present here. It is, in fact, Chironosaurus, um, which, you know, looks 
decently similar to Parasaurolophus. Uh, but, you know, for this, they use the same model of the para. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that some people would mention this one if I didn't bring it up. But of course, it's not it's not meant to be Parasaurolophus. It's just, it's a different genus entirely. <laughs> this one's a pretty funny one to me. Uh, Gigantosaurus, it's not a show that I have ever watched, but I have seen uh, brief images of it before. And I've, I've talked about the Spinosaurus from it, of course. And this little Parasaur that named Rocky by the looks of it, such a funny design. I love it. I love the proportions. He stands upright. He's a lot more, you know, human-like. Very thin arms and huge hands. Huge bugged out eyes. A stubby face. It's just so fun. It's just it's just a really fun design. Um, it looks like he has a lot of personality. You know, it's just I can't really complain. It's just it's just a fun design. And then the aisle. Um, the aisle practically always uh, nails it with their dinosaur designs, and the Parasaurolophus, in my opinion, is no exception. It has a decently thick build. The colors seem pretty good, like the colors that you, you get to give it, of course, because you get to choose the colors in the game. Uh, this is, the, as far as I can tell, this is only for Legacy. Um, I haven't really played any of Rima, but I know that Rima is planning on adding Para in the future, and I know that they're, they, at least when I was looking into it, like, uh, some time ago, they were planning on adding the stunning honk noise, you know, <laughs> but no, it, in terms of its design, especially with the growth stages, I think that they did really nail its design at, at the very least in Legacy, and I'm sure that Avrima will look really good too. If I found any concept art or something, I'll place it up here, and I'll put text saying, Yes, it looks really good. So uh, I'm sure that you'll know that in the future. Our next video game is from Jurassic World The Game, where we get our second ever Lego dinosaur in this series. Um, you know, it's based off of the, the Lost World uh, Parasaurolophus, so it's got more soy brown color, a uh, little bit more bipedal. It, you know, it looks fantastic. I love Lego versions of these dinosaurs, and the Parasaurolophus is just another example of, of one that I just think looks so fun in Lego. Uh, I want to see more dinosaurs in Lego, like officially, like released as actual minifigures. I want a Lego Spinosaurus up here. You have no idea. That's something I've always wanted. Um, I don't think we've ever released an official Lego uh para before but we do get it in the game so that's cool and if we you know if they do release it i hope that they release it like this you know especially with the thicker back and things like that so it's a very good design back at it again with jurassic park builder um once again stubby dinosaur it's based off of the jurassic franchise para and just with stubbier features i especially really like the brighter coloration that, that it gets once you level it up more and you know it gets that opportunity uh you know the duller colors are fine but they're a great starting out point and then you eventually get the brighter colors so it's just really fun same can also be said for jurassic world the game where it starts off you know relatively dull and like the basic parasaur that you'll probably be expecting and then you get as you level it up it gets more and more uh coloration especially once you reach the uh the area where it gets a huge crest like a huge brightly colored crest as well as um kind of a little bit of that skin membrane that actually hasn't showed up as much as i thought it was going to but it's there, you know, it's it's on this one. I completely skipped over this one, but it, since we're in the Jurassic franchise again, I want to mention Camp Cretaceous did introduce uh, Glow in the Dark, you know, bioluminescent parasaurs. Um, you know, they're, they're of course genetically modified to do so. Um, that's just another cool addition. It's the same basic model of the parasaur that we're also used to in the Jurassic franchise, just with brighter coloration that you actually get to have in Jurassic World Evolution. So that's awesome, you know? But yeah, I completely forgot to mention that one. I, I meant to do it in the Jurassic franchise one, but now it's here. <laughs> and I feel like we mention this one every time, but this is of course the Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter parasaur. This is one of the first dinosaurs that you you hunt in this game. So it's basically like a starter dinosaur, essentially. Um, it, it keeps that same style that Carnivores goes for, which is like based on more so retro looking dinosaurs, uh, because of course they're aliens. They're not necessarily meant to be accurate. They're just they're, they represent dinosaurs that were accurate at one time. The Parasaur in this seems to keep more so kind of like a bipedal stance and is very skittish to, to note, but it is the easiest dinosaur to take down. And because it's one of the first dinosaurs that you encounter in the game, um, I'm sure that it, it's left a, a lasting impact on many people. 
But I will note that it looks like brown is pretty common for Parasaur designs in a lot of this media, because this is another brown one, and I feel like we've seen quite a few brown ones. Now we have Beasts of Bermuda. This is not one that I've really had the opportunity to play, uh, but I have seen some footage of it, and its, it's Parasaur design is so fantastic. It's got the thicker build, it's got a huge crest. Um, it looks like some of the colors that you can give it are fantastic. I think that it's a very good design in here. It has a thick neck, I, I really no complaints at all. Beast of Bermuda does seem like a game that I do want to play. I haven't really gotten the opportunity to play it, but it looks fantastic. And, you know, if this Parasaur is anything to go off of, then yeah, it looks great. Next up is Ark Survival Evolved. One of the first dinosaurs that you will likely tame or encounter is the Parasaur. Now, they have a pretty much standard Parasaur uh, design, like the model pretty much wrap matches up to what you'd expect from the animal, just with some flares here and there, like the skin flap uh, that actually goes all the way down to the back, kind of reminiscent of uh, Fantasia, which is fun, and some spikes that are here and there. You know, it. I, I say this every time with Ark, it certainly fits the design or the, the style of Ark, um, which is good. You know, you want it to fit your your design. But what I what I really like is that it basically keeps the same basic idea of the animal and just adds things onto it instead of like making something completely different and saying, yeah, this is a parasaur. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a this is a you know, it's a solid arc design. Next up is my beloved, and that is Prehistoric Kingdom. They never fail with their designs in Prehistoric Kingdom. Of course, in this game they go for more of an accuracy uh, you know, that's the whole point of the game, and this matches up with that. You know, it has, I love the forelimbs, the colors that they get, the crests look great. You, you just, you really can't go wrong. Like, I, I, I'm especially a fan of this model right here. Um, this is certainly one of my favorite models in the in the game, uh, in terms of the Parasaurolophus uh, model. Just one of the many, many reasons why Prehistoric Kingdom is one of my favorite games. And then finally, we have Turok Evolution. Um, it has a very basic Parasaur Olympus design. I mean, honestly, there's really not too much that differentiates it from the uh, the real life animal, aside from being a little bit thin. Uh, it's got that brown coloration, but with some yellows mixed in here and there. It, you know, I don't know too much about Turok, but this looks fantastic. You know, I know that a lot of their dinosaur designs are stylized to fit what they're going for in their game. Uh, you know, this very futuristic dinosaur game. It, 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 you know, it's a, it's a game I've always wanted to play, and this is, a, you know, it's just, it's cool. I like it. It's a, it's a really good design. And that is a good portion of the many interpretations of Parasaurolophus. Once again, this was a very fun video to make. Para, uh, Parasaurolophus is just a very cool dinosaur that I feel is a little bit underrated. It's just, it's just a dinosaur that I just think stands out and is, you know, one of my favorite dinosaurs. It looks awesome. I love Parasaurolophus. So there will not be a poll going up for the next video because I actually have one in mind that I hope all of you will like. I'm pretty sure you will um, because, you know, it's a little bit different. It's another many interpretations of video, just a little bit different. Uh, and I think you'll like it, hopefully. I hope you guys will like it. Uh, but after that one, we will be doing another poll, um, you know, and I'll let you guys decide what prehistoric creature we do uh, with that poll. Uh, once again, I will address the T-Rex because so several people still do ask about uh, many interpretations of T-Rex, which again is fair. I completely understand. T-Rex is awesome. Um, but once again, I do plan on doing that one at 10,000 subscribers because it will just be a massive, massive video. T-Rex shows up in so many different places, even projects that aren't even focused on dinosaurs. If they need a dinosaur, they're like, yeah, put T-Rex in there. So, and because it's such a popular animal, I want to include as many as I possibly can. So it, it'll definitely be like a little bit of a longer video, probably even longer than this one or the Iguanodon video. Um, so, you know, it, it'd take a little bit of time to get that out. And I just want it to, you know, be for a special occasion. So yes, T-Rex will be coming, uh, you know, in the future if we ever reach 10,000 subscribers. But on that note, thank you guys so much for subscribing. We have reached 7,000, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever get to that point with this with this channel. You know, that's that's not you know that's just not something that I ever comprehended. So thank you guys so much for doing that. I really do appreciate it. I, I'm glad that you guys do enjoy my videos. But that's pretty much all I have for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have an awesome day.